The long one is a long distance run that provides the gentle challenge through mileage extension, which will develop the exact endurance necessary for getting you to the finish line. This will be the cornerstone of your training and fitness. It starts with the longest distance you've covered within the last two weeks. As you lengthen the long one to 14 miles for a half or 26 miles for a full marathon, you build the exact endurance needed to complete your target race. A detailed training plan can be found in the DVD-ROM. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do I need to do the full mileage of my race before the race? Well, I found that the place where you might hit the wall is the distance of your last long run within the last two to three weeks before your race. The wall is a debilitating state of fatigue. Within a few hundred yards, you go from feeling very tired to feeling like you just can't go on anymore. And the most common reason for hitting the wall is that you haven't run far enough in preparation for your event. Our training program leads you right up to the distance that you will need in order to complete your event. While there are significant and continuing physical benefits from going farther regularly, the mental ones are even greater. This produces mental momentum, self-confidence, and a positive attitude. It also reduces the number of negative messages most people get who do not go up to the full distance in preparation for their race. You only have to do the long one every other week once you reach five miles in the half marathon or 10 miles in the full. Let's talk about what to do on the non-long run weekends. Most are gonna do a slow run walk about half the distance of the current long one up to seven miles. You may also take this opportunity to do some cross training, but look at the schedule and you can figure out what to do. On two to four of these easy weekends, it's wise to test your improvement using the magic mile. This will help you predict where your pace is in both training and in racing. The Galloway program has a number of unique elements that allow you to gain control over your fatigue, virtually eliminate injury, monitor your progress, and tell you pretty much exactly how slow you need to go on long runs, therefore eliminating uh, the causes of most injuries. The bottom line is that you can't go too slow on the long runs, and the Magic Mile will tell you what that slow pace should be. But even if you run two, three, four, or five minutes per mile slower than your current capability in the marathon or the half marathon, you're still gonna get all of the endurance of that long run. Let's go through the procedures of the Magic Mile as to how it should be done. The Magic Mile is the very best way I have found to determine what is an appropriate pace, both for a goal in the marathon itself and also a long run pace. At the first part of the season, you will run your first Magic Mile for time. Go to a track, run four laps around a track, and time yourself. The first time you do it, though, don't run fast. Just run about the pace that you normally run. You could pick up the pace a tiny, tiny bit at the end, but do not sprint. And, of course, do not puke. I'm against puking. So after you've gotten your time on the first magic mile, your purpose and mission on the second one is to beat that first time. And on each successive magic mile, you continue to shoot for running your fastest magic mile time each time that magic mile becomes very predictive as to what you're capable of doing in a half marathon or a marathon. Because over the years, I've crunched the numbers. I've taken over 15,000 instances of people running a magic mile and then compared it with what they ended up running. And I've found that most people tend to slow down 20% uh, when they go to a half marathon and 30% in a marathon. That means that a person that ends up with their fastest magic mile of 10 minutes flat could be expected to run a really hard half marathon in 12 minutes per mile and a really hard full marathon in 13 minutes per mile. Now, we don't want first-time marathoners or half-marathoners to go all out and try for these times, but at least you know what these times would be. 
Nice job. The most important function of the Magic Mile is to determine what your long run pace should be. And that's determined very simply by adding two minutes to what is predicted in the marathon, even if you're training for the half marathon. So the example here, someone that runs a 10 minute flat Magic Mile as their fastest Magic Mile, multiply by 1.3, that predicts a really fast marathon pace of 13 minutes per mile. So that person should be running no faster than 15 minutes per mile on their long runs. The main concept here is that the pace that is recommended for long runs is the fastest pace that you should be running on long runs. It's always fine to run slower than that pace. All this means is that you will recover faster. It all falls into place once you've done three or four long runs.